Hey guys and welcome to today's video where I'm finally building and moving my sun beetles into their new glass terrarium and I'll be doing the first part of this build in various areas of my new house. The first part is actually in the future reptile room though we have actually stripped the wallpaper and taken the carpet up so it's a little bit bare but nevertheless here is the terrarium. Now this was very generously sent to me by Haberstadt. I've had a lot of people ask me about these terrariums as they're fairly new to the market so I thought I'd try one out. Now the one I'm using for the beetles is a 30 by 30 by 32 centimeter tank. This size terrarium comes fully built but I do believe that some of the bigger ones come flat packed. This one is also watertight, so though it may be quite shallow, you could potentially make it into a little paludarium setup. Now the lid is fully removable, and the little mechanisms to unlock the lid are very simple. Along the back of the terrarium you'll find these four gaps. This will allow wires to be fed through, so if you're using heating, or thermostats, thermometers, all that kind of stuff. And basically the little plastic slide goes back and forth depending on whether you want them open or closed. Now I will say this was the only part that was a little bit stiff on the terrarium. It might be because it's new and needs loosening up, but I did have a bit of a struggle opening and closing these. Now to open the door, it is a two hand kind of job. Once again, a very simple mechanism. And also side note, I am so sorry my hands are very battered at the moment. I've been doing a lot of DIYing. There's also a hole in case you want to add a lock to your terrarium. Now, I always love to add a background in my tanks and for this I wanted it to be completely natural. So I just got a big bit of cork and I broke it up. I then added this to the back of the tank using silicon sealant. This is an aquarium safe sealant I used for pretty much all my builds and I have it linked in my Amazon shop below. Once it was dry, I went back with more sealant to fill in the gaps. I used little bits of cork bark that had broken off when I was breaking up the cork, and also these tiny bits of crushed rock, which are brown. Now, if you've seen Diego's tank build, they're really good when they mix with silicon sealant. I believe Universal Rocks use them, and it actually worked perfectly for this, as I didn't have any sort of eco earth or anything to put in here. Eventually. Now we're back to the original reptile room. I'm gonna sort through this box and get out any beetles and cocoons that I can find so when I'm moving their dirt, I'm not disturbing them. Oh! Oh, Jesus, it's flying! Girl, you need to chill, your wing's hanging out. So I thought I'd found all the beetles, there were five beetles and at the time I thought there were five cocoons but one of them turned out to actually be empty. This one looks so big, it looks as though maybe this and this are two separate ones. So I think we do have all of the ones we're looking for. They do act dead when disturbed, they are actually okay. Uh, but now we've done that and separated them out, let's go and set up their tank. Now, in terms of heating and lighting in here, I was gonna use a heat mat and then this unit with a jungle dawn in. However, I kind of realized that sun beetles and the sun radiates heat and light down. And so it would make more sense to just use a heat bulb um, because a lot, apparently these do bask. So I'm using the solar basking flood, 50 watt. Um, it produces UVA and obviously visual light. I'm using a dimming stat which I was able to actually feed through the back of the cork and um, just fits in the top of the tank really nicely. And I'm gonna place that probably on top of some rock. So um, that will be the basking area. But for now, let's, um, let's put all this lighting together. So the light and heating is now in. It is set to about 32 degrees Celsius. Um, so this should be nice because they can move away down the dirt if they want to cool down or behind the cork. But now I'm going to add in the dirt and I want to kind of build this up so there's plenty of digging space, plenty of places to hide. <laughs>
Now along with the sun beetles, I am actually adding in a very special beetle. And this one here actually used to live with Ziggy. And uh, obviously Ziggy passed away and I've been keeping it watered and fed in Ziggy's vivarium. But sadly today I did have to take apart her vivarium and I didn't want to uh, just, you know, put this with the rest of them because I feel it's very special. So... It's just walking off, but it's going to live with the sun beetles. I've just noticed this cocoon has hatched out. So I don't know if there's actually three had moulded together. And this one, one of them hatched out of this. That's quite interesting. So I put away the cocoons, but I didn't want to put them directly under the heat. Because obviously they're stuck in cocoons and it might be too hot for them and they might struggle. So, oh, there goes the beetle. Uh, so I put them near the front. So there is some temperature, but not too much. He's already claimed this land. Very much enjoying it. Now adding in the sun beetles. What? You're not, no, turn around, turn around, come on. That was, you're meant to be your big entrance and you just plopped. And the final thing we're going to do for now is add in some fruit. So I've got some grapes that are sort of going off. I thought I'd put them in there. I built up this area with some dirt that the uh, beetles were in whilst they were waiting to come in the tank. But we'll leave that like that and come back later to see how they're doing. So I ended up adding a branch in the middle of this tank, it goes all the way from this corner up here. I think this will give them the opportunity to not only climb up the background but climb through the middle, climb over the heated space, maybe they want to get a little more heat or they can go underneath if they want a little less. I also added in some plants, so this is a fake plant in this corner, however this is a pothos cutting. Now this was taken from Lyra's tank, it was growing really well but it's grown against the window down the side of the tank so it probably wouldn't have done well for long. I'm going to see how it does in here. Um, I've just popped it in the back for now, gave it a good water but hopefully it does well because that could look really cool. I feel like this needed a pop of colour. Now I don't have a jungle dawn on here, I do only have that solar basking light but Pothos seem to do well in quite a few different conditions so we shall see about that. Now in terms of the beetles, they're of course asleep right now because I am filming this at night. But once I put them in during the day, they were really active actually. I, I didn't even know they could somehow climb up glass. I think they can just hook in and they were doing that earlier. But what I'll do is I'll get some shots tomorrow of them hanging out and you can see how active they really are. The only beetle that's out at the moment is Ziggy's beetle. So this is a Morio worm beetle um, and this beetle has only ever lived in wooden vivariums and glass terrariums it's a very spoilt beetle but um, it seems to be enjoying sort of gnawing on a fake plant nevertheless um, the beetles do seem to enjoy this and I'm actually really happy with how this has come out day two so the first thing that was noticeable this morning when I woke up is the crunchy leaves you can hear the beetles just like gnawing on the leaves or walking through them I don't know what is he doing I don't know what that is. I don't know what's going on. By the way, I do have a, <laughs> a meditating sloth and meditating giraffe to look over this tank. But um, the most obvious thing is we have two beetles here. There was a third one, but he dropped and went there. And there's also, you can't really see it. Oh, there's a beetle right here. It's the next morning and four of the beetles are out. They've been chewing on leaves. One thing I have noticed since adding in obviously this heat lamp is firstly the pothos is no longer and um, the the substrate gets dry really quickly obviously so I did give it a good mist down last night um, but they seem to be doing well. I think I'm going to give them a little extra fruit though because I think they've gone through that grape. All the grapes turned into a raisin by now. Also I just realised that all five beetles are actually out so that's pretty cool to see. Oh hello, they found the apple. So it's the next morning and all the beetles are out. There's one just down here that you can't see but they are all out. You wake up to the sound of crispy leaves which, you know, we're like technically in autumn now so I'm here for it. <laughs> but 
um, it's quite nice in the day, like the morning you see them, at night you see Ziggy's beetle, he seems to sleep during the day. I'm not sure which day this technically is, but yesterday I couldn't film because I didn't have my camera, but I put a little bit of banana in and they seem to enjoy it. Now one good thing about having these as pets is when you open the door, they don't scarper, they don't just suddenly hide and you're like, oh I don't know where they've gone. They, they play dead. <laughs> So they pretty much stay still so you can actually still see them. Now, the Pothos, the Pothos has not done well. Um, so this is a prime example like what I was talking about in my video about tanks. That when they're first set up, they can look fabulous. But sometimes plants don't do well, especially in this heat. It's probably to do with that. Um, just not doing great. I might have to pop a fake plant in there like that one. But um, the beetles are doing well. The apple is shriveled. We haven't had, from what I can tell, any more hatch out. There's one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's still five in here. So hopefully eventually the others hatch out. But five out of ten for now, still good. I would like to see the rest though eventually. But if you follow me on Instagram, I'm sure I'll post. And maybe we'll do an update because I'm sure these guys are going to breed and we're going to have grubs and the whole cycle is going to go on again. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you and goodbye. So it's been a little while since I ended the video, but I actually came to find we now have seven beetles, so there's three there, two more there, there is one, he's just gone away, it's just, see the back of him, there, that's the sixth one, the seventh one is on the melon. Now usually when they emerge out, their cocoons come near the top of the soil and I've spotted a cocoon down here. Wait, this one's still closed. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so I'll pop him back down. That's so weird on top. It's like a little pine cone. I didn't know if they'd come out of... There's one out of that one. But there might still be one in there. I don't know. It's weird. I don't like to move them, really, but I thought they might be empty. But yeah, we have seven now. So that's exciting. Sorry guys, I am completely messing this up. Let me put your little leaves back. I don't know where they came from. But I wanted to um, li like update you before this completely ended.